Good morning, Calvary. I'm Pastor Pete, and I have your word for the day coming from Exodus 8, 16 through 19. Here we have a very short account of the third plague that God sent on Egypt. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth so that it may become gnats in all the land of Egypt. And they did so. Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth, and there were gnats on man and beast. All the dust of the earth became gnats in all the land of Egypt. Many of you are from the Midwest, and you are familiar with gnats. If the cold doesn't bring you to Arizona, the gnats might be the second greatest factor. In Iowa, we had these pesky little pests that we called no see -ums. They were so small that you couldn't really see them, but you could definitely feel them when they bit you. Now, I don't know if they're technically classified as gnats, but I always think of them as some type of gnat. But even the most garden variety gnat is extremely annoying. They can get in your eyes, your ears, your nose, and your mouth. They are irritating. They taste bad if you've ever eaten them. And if in great enough quantities, they have the ability to ruin almost any outdoor activity. And here, God turned the dust of the earth into gnats. He is showing his mighty power in order to bring Pharaoh into submission. Let's see the response. We can read that response in verses 18 and 19. The magicians tried by their secret arts to produce gnats, but they could not. So there were gnats on man and beast. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he would not listen to them, as the Lord had said. With the first two plagues, the magicians were somehow able to replicate the plagues. But turning dust into gnats, well, that's something only God can do. So the magicians state the obvious. This is the finger of God. This is above and beyond any power that they have. This shows clearly that God's mighty hand is behind this new plague. Pharaoh really should give way and give up, but Pharaoh's hard heart would not yield to God. God had more in store to prove his supreme power over Pharaoh. What can we learn from this? Note that it said that Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he wouldn't listen to them. How are you at listening? Pharaoh wouldn't listen to Moses, Aaron, God, and he wouldn't even listen to his own trusted magicians. This is a symptom of a hard heart. When our heart is so hardened to God and others, we simply won't listen to them. Our hearts can be so convinced of our own self-righteousness, our own power and our own abilities that we refuse to listen to others. You expect to see this in toddlers, but it is a terrible trait in adults, and it is a deadly trait in leaders. Refusal to listen to counsel is a mark of a fool. Even though he had great authority and power, Pharaoh was a fool. So how about you? Do you listen? Do you heed counsel? If you're not the best listener, either you need hearing aids or you might need a softer heart. The doctor can help you with the hearing aids, but only God can soften your heart. Take some time to think about your willingness to listen to your friends, your parents, your spouse, and most importantly, God's word. Take some time today to listen to him. Ask him to soften your heart so that you can listen to his leading. You know, if this word of the day has encouraged you, would you like it, share it, or leave a comment and have a blessed day?